Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and welcome back to the final episode of the Greatest Warrior Lu Bu lore series as we finish with part 8, titled The Execution. Now last time we ended with Yuan Shu's failed attack on Lu Bu, as elements of Yuan Shu's army ended up betraying one another, and for a period of time, Lu Bu and his armies would finally earn some rest, as Lu Bu mostly relied on his reputation to extort local officials for the resources needed to grow his army. One such official was Xiao Jian, who was the chancellor of the princedom of Langya. Out of fear, Xiao Jian had promised to pay Lü Bu a tribute that included five prize horses. However, before the tribute was delivered, the city of Ju, where the tribute was being stored, fell to Zhen Ba, who was a former Taoqian lieutenant that had become an independent warlord following Lü Bu's takeover of the Xu province. Now it took a while for Zhan Ba to realize that these horses were meant as tributes for Lü Bu, but once he did, he had every intention to fulfill that promise. But Lü Bu did not give him that chance, as after not receiving a timely delivery of the horses, Lü Bu would march his army to siege the city of Ju. Initially, Lü Bu's lieutenant, Gao Shun, tried to talk Lü Bu out of this attack, as he argued that Lü Bu was in a great position in the Xu province, where his reputation alone carried weight. All they would need to do is to demand the same tribute from Zhan Ba, and they will receive. But if they go to war with Zhan Ba, then they're essentially putting that reputation to the test. If they win, then of course the reputation still holds. But if they lose, then the myth of Lü Bu's strength would dissipate among the local officials. While these words ring true, Lü Bu have already long grown tired of Gao Shun's advice, as even though Lü Bu knew Gao Shun was a stern, disciplined lieutenant who was loyal beyond a doubt, he could not stand Gao Shun's righteous suggestions and lectures, as Gao Shun would often warn him to be careful about what he says, as Lü Bu was prone to outlandish statements only to backtrack on them later, which only served to make his commands carry less weight in the army, as no one was sure if he was going to change his mind later. This of course was only a microcosm of his larger problem of betrayal and switching sides when it came to alliances. And in comparison, Gao Shun was a stoic general who is one of the few in Lü Bu's army to never drink, and his personal retinue of 700 camp breakers were the best heavy infantry in Lü Bu's army. This juxtaposition only made Lü Bu dislike Gao Shun more, as he would often make Gao Shun give command of the camp breakers over to General Wei Xu on the grounds that Wei Xu was more trustworthy since he was Lü Bu's brother-in-law only for Lü Bu to hand the command back to Gao Shun in times of war, as Gao Shun was clearly the better commander. But despite all this, Gao Shun never complained and continued to serve Lü Bu loyally. Yet in this instant, his words would prove correct once again, as Lü Bu's siege of Ju would end in failure, as Zhan Ba, a veteran from fighting the local Yellow Turban insurgencies, easily held the city. Fortunately, Zhan Ba had no interest in making an enemy out of Lü Bu, as both sides would eventually walk away with the truth as the tributes were returned. While this conflict ended peacefully, Lü Bu's flip-flop nature would surface yet again in 198, when he started to cozy up to Yuan Shu once again. This alerted many of the Han loyalists in the area, including Liu Bei, who had been rebuilding his strength since surrendering to Lü Bu. So when Lü Bu sent an envoy north with gold to purchase more war horses from the Henei commandery, which was controlled by his good friend Zhang Yang, Liu Bei decided to make his move, as he would have his forces ambush the envoy on the return journey, as Liu Bei would end up stealing all the war horses from Lü Bu. With war horses as valuable as modern-day tanks, Lü Bu would never let this go. 
as Gaosheng was sent to join forces with Zhang Liao, who had been serving as an administrator for Lu Bu in the northern parts of the Xu province, as the two would team up to attack Liu Bei in Xiaopei. Immediately, Liu Bei would ask the imperial court and thus Cao Cao for aid, and Cao Cao would send Xia Hu Dun to come rescue Liu Bei. But even with Xia Hu Dun's aid, Liu Bei's forces would be soundly defeated by Gao Shun and Zhang Liao, and in September of 198, the city of Xiaopei would fall, as Liu Bei would escape with Xia Hu Dun west to Xuchang to join forces with Cao Cao, as Lu Bu would once again capture Liu Bei's family and use them as hostage. And by the time Liu Bei arrived in Xuchang, Cao Cao had already made the final preparations to personally lead a campaign against Lu Bu, as by late September in the same month, the city of Xiapi would be surrounded by Cao Cao's forces. Initially, Cao Cao wrote a letter to Lu Bu demanding his surrender, and Lu Bu had made up his mind to surrender. But Chen Gong, who personally felt that his earlier betrayal of Cao Cao had left their relationship in a state beyond repair, was against this, as he argued that Cao Cao's larger army can't sustain the siege for long. If Lu Bu simply camped his forces outside the city, while he and Gao Shun remained with a decent-sized garrison inside, then Cao Cao would be unable to siege them. As if Cao Cao targeted the city, then Lu Bu would be able to utilize his cavalry to harass Cao Cao's main camp and supply lines. And should Cao Cao target Lu Bu's encampment, then Gao Shun could charge out with his camp breakers to attack Cao Cao in the rear. Therefore, if they can just stall out Cao Cao for a month, then Cao Cao will surely run out of supplies and retreat. At first, Lu Bu agreed, and refused Cao Cao's demand for surrender. But just before he would march out the city to set up his encampment, his wife stopped him. It turned out Lu Bu's wife trusted Chen Gong even less than Lu Bu did, and she pointed out that Cao Cao had treated Chen Gong as if he was his own baby son, yet Chen Gong still betrayed him. So how can you be sure if the battle turned against us that Chen Gong would not shut the gates on you and betray us. Hearing this, Lu Bu decided to listen to his wife, as he instead sent out messengers to Yuan Shu asking for aid, as he and his 1,000 cavalry rode outside for a quick battle to test Cao Cao's forces. And after three quick defeats, Lu Bu knew he was no match, as he would give up all attempts at meeting Cao Cao in the field and resorted to holding out in Xiapi for as long as he could as he awaited for aid. Three months would go by, as eventually, Cao Cao even managed to cut off the water supplies to the city as the situation grew desperate inside. The tension amongst the officers grew, and in one particular instance, Lu Bu's officer, Hou Cheng, who was in charge of the horses, ended up losing one of Lu Bu's prized horses. But thankfully, before Lu Bu became aware, the horse was found again, much to Hou Cheng's relief. And to celebrate his good luck, Hou Cheng and a few other officers gathered at Hou Cheng's residence for a feast. Now at this time, Lu Bu had already banned the drinking and making of alcohol, as the water supply in the city were running low. But because of this feast, Hou Cheng had brought out some of his own reserves. And in order to not offend Lu Bu, Hou Cheng decided to send some to Lu Bu as well. However, this move only angered Lu Bu more, as the continued siege had made Lu Bu more paranoid and tense. So instead of enjoying the liquor sent by Hou Cheng, Lu Bu stormed to Hou Cheng's residence to reprimand him for drinking again, only to find many of his officers hosting this feast there. Outraged, a stressed out Lu Bu unleashed on them, as he accused all of them of plotting against him in secret and celebrating their future with liquor. Now worried for their lives, Hou Cheng, Song Xian, and Wei Xu, who was Lu Bu's brother-in-law, would end up rebelling against him in December of 198, as they would capture Gao Shun and Chen Gong alive before opening the gates to Cao Cao's forces. Seeing all was lost, Lu Bu asked his guards, to take his head and bring it to Cao Cao, so the city might be spared. 
but out of loyalty, his guards refused as they simply ended up tying him up and had him delivered to Cao Cao instead. Now, Cao Cao wanted to employ all three of the prisoners in Cheng Gong, Gao Shun, and Lu Bu. But Gao Shun simply refused and then went silent as he awaited his death. As for Cheng Gong, Cao Cao tried to remind him of his elderly mother and young son. Chen Gong simply replied that I'm sure that since you want to govern the country on the principles of Confucianism, where filial piety is the core tenet, you will spare my mother and son. And then Chen Gong went silent as well, as he too awaited for his death. Then finally, Lu Bu would end up pleading for his life, as he suggested to Cao Cao that with his strength at his side, the land can be easily united. While Cao Cao was tempted, Liu Bei stepped in to remind Cao Cao of the fates of Ding Yuan and Dong Zhuo, as Cao Cao finally made up his mind to execute all three. Then the three heads were sent to Xu Cheng to be hung at the gates for all to see before they would be rejoined with their bodies and buried outside of the city. Now a few minor points to clear up before we end our series here with Liu Bu's death. During the siege of Sapi, Zhang Liao was not present, as he had always been in the northern part of the province, first as the administrator, then as the chancellor of the princedom of Lu. He did march his forces out to reinforce Lu Bu, but by the time he had arrived, the battle was over and Lu Bu was already dead. So instead of continued resistance, Zhang Liao surrendered himself and the princedom of Lu over to Cao Cao, who happily accepted his surrender and made him into a general. Zhan Ba, who had also tried to assist Lu Bu during the siege, tried to go into hiding after Lu Bu's death, but his exploits during his youth made him quite famous, and Cao Cao demanded that he be found and employed. So not long after Zhan Ba was discovered, as he ended up joining Cao Cao as a general as well. We actually covered Zan Ba in our Road to Guandu series, so if you want to get more information on this, please go check that out. And speaking of that series, Zhang Yang was also on his way to reinforce Lu Bu when Xia Pi fell, and his fate would actually be the spark plug that would kick off the entire Guandu conflict, as the Henei commandery would become Cao Cao's first holdings north of the Yellow River, which became a red line for Yuan Shao. And once again, if you want more information on that, please go check out our Road to Guandu series. As for Lu Bu's family, there was nothing recorded about the fates of Lu Bu's wife and daughter, but given the fact that Wei Xu had been one of the generals to betray Lu Bu and surrender to Cao Cao, and considering that Lu Bu's wife, Lady Wei, was Wei Xu's sister, I'm sure the wife and the daughter were probably spared after the battle. Chen Gong's mother and son were also spared, as Cao Cao even helped support their family financially out of respect to the time when Chen Gong had served him in the past. And lastly, Lu Bu's tomb was actually found in a village in Henei in 2007. It was luckily never looted, as it was really small in scale, measuring only 18 meters in length, and it didn't contain many valuables. There was however a stone carving with text depicting Lu Bu's life, which helped immensely in identifying the owner of the tomb, and most importantly, his spearhead was found, which is pictured here, which completely dispelled the myth of the sky piercer. So with this, we'll end our series here. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!